Hi, you're watching Business Today Television. I'm Sakshi Batra. Well, this is the earnings focus edition. Uh, GIC Ray is on our radar today. The company has posted a 3% uptick as far as its net profit is concerned. It came in at 2,642 odd crore rupees. Now, remember what we've also seen is that the company has collected a gross premium of 8,724 odd crore rupees. This is again an improvement from 7,370 crores a year ago uh, the company had reported. Standalone net premium has grown by 26.7% to 7,904 crores versus 6,234 odd crore rupees. Underwriting profit, however, has stood at 570 odd crore rupees against 892 odd crore rupees in the year ago period. Joining in to detail for us uh, the earnings insights and the outlook is joining us uh, the top management of the company, Mr. Ramaswamy Narayanan, the CMD of GIC Ray is with us. Uh, a uh, warm welcome to you, sir, on Business Today Television. Uh, could you begin by telling all our viewers uh, what uh, contributed uh, to your uh, quarterly earnings this time around? And uh, has it met your expectations versus the guidance that you had given for the entire fiscal year as well? Yeah, good morning. Uh, as far as the Q4 is uh, concerned, yes, we've done very well. And we've actually exceeded the guidance that we gave uh, at the end of Q3. Because Q, uh, at the time of Q3, our combined for the nine months was at around 118%. Uh, and we had hoped that we would be able to reduce that by about 4% going forward. And this is because the Jan, Feb, March quarter is normally a good one for us. Because there are no catastrophes either in India or across the world. So we normally do well in this quarter. So we hope to uh, uh, better our combined ratio by about 4 percentage points. But actually we have uh, done it by about 6 percentage points and our combined for this year stands at 111.8%. Now, this is about 2.5% more than uh, the previous year. Uh, but then uh, we still take uh, uh, hope from the fact that this year there were nine catastrophic events that hit India. And uh, that actually added about 3,500 crores of losses to our books. In spite of that, the portfolio has uh, performed very well. Uh, in fact, if uh, these losses had not happened, our combined would have been closer to about 103-104%. Uh, so that augurs well. Our net profit is uh, grown by about 3% for the year. And uh, we are at a record uh, 6,500 crore uh, net profit levels for GIC. This is the first time we have reached these levels. All these augurs well for the company going forward. Hmm, okay. Got that, sir. So as far as your net earned premium is concerned, there has been a growth that you've reported. Uh, but uh, what is the outlook right there uh, going forward from here for FI25? Uh, FI25, we do expect to grow and uh, we expect that growth to be substantial by about 15-16% compared to the uh, uh, FI24. And that is simply because we have grown our book in India uh, substantially this year. Uh, now, reinsurance business happens in uh, chunks, you know. So, 1st April is the time when the Indian business uh, renews. 1st Jan is the time when major uh, international property or uh, international business renews. So, in the 1st April renewals uh, of, uh, in 24, uh, in 1st uh, uh, April 24, we have grown substantially our book in India. Uh, so, that augurs well from a, a growth perspective. We also believe that some of the business that we have written are really uh, very profitable. And uh, more importantly, we have uh, ensured that the growth happens uh, uh, across different classes of business. Because as a reinsurance of uh, reinsurer of our size, we need to ensure that we manage the spread of uh, business across across uh, geographies as well as across different classes of business. Uh, so that would uh, ensure that you know one loss in any one particular class does not really spoil our balance sheet or our profit and loss. So in that sense, we have really spread our book well. We have written uh, some good businesses which are profitable and uh, that augurs well for uh, financial year 25. Okay, got that. Now, uh, like you said, sir, that reinsurance is a, you know, not discussed uh, and is a very uh, quite interesting kind of a business and our viewers uh, will be very happy to understand from you as to how this really shapes up for you as far as your book is concerned. Now, if you could highlight for a broader understanding of our wider audiences, what sort of business lines do you really look at? which are the profitable ones versus uh, where have you actually stopped underwriting as well. So going forward from here, we get an understanding of which is the focus area for the company going to be. So typically property happens to be the uh, uh, one area where most reinsurers write up quite a bit of business and that is one class of business which also uh, uh, you know provides a lot of reinsurance uh, capabilities and uh, opportunities. So we do write a lot of uh, property business but then 
being a major reinsurer in india also means that we get a lot of opportunities in other classes uh, in the indian insurance market health has been growing substantially over the last couple of years especially post covid so we've also written quite a good uh, amount of business in health this year uh, which we were not writing earlier so that is a good uh, uh, portfolio to have uh, going forward we also write reasonably good businesses in uh, motor uh, as well as agriculture which we have been uh, doing traditionally uh, and overall all these uh, uh, ensures that our spread across classes helps us to take care of losses which happen uh, you know in any one class of business uh, internationally we have cut down on our uh, marine and motor portfolio which we used to write earlier because it was not really working well for us if you see the fi 24 figures you will actually see that our marine portfolio has not done all that well so we have cut down some of those uh, exposures coming in from the international market but in india we uh, continue to write uh, those classes of business so it's all a question of uh, you know understanding and uh, seeing which business works for you at what point of time and uh, ensuring that you start growing that business much more Hmm. Okay, understood that. Uh, so, if uh, also I understand from you, how is the uh, underwriting profits uh, this time around have shown some kind of a dip versus year on year? What could have been the key reason for that? And do you see improvement coming in any time soon, or is it going to be a little while longer that we need to wait? No, I think the improvements will come uh, in the underwriting uh, uh, results and the the under in the combined ratios. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, for the uh, this particular quarter, uh, what had happened was there were a few catastrophic events, Cyclone Michong and uh, the um, uh, Tamil Nadu flood, which had happened in uh, December. All the provisions and the results came out in uh, the th in the fourth quarter. So, which is why you would see that you know the uh, domestic property uh, business in that quarter had suffered losses, and because of which uh, the overall underwriting uh, profits came down a bit. But we are very confident about this book working for us and going forward i think uh, the combined ratios will improve because the kind of businesses that we have written on first april 2024 augurs well for this company mm -hmm. and uh, again like i said uh, the um, motor and marine business which we have cut off uh, from the international business which we used to write in the us for instance that will also ensure that the losses come down uh, currently we are at 111.8 our desire is to you know over the next couple of years to reach a level of 105 106 and then going forward uh, as we increase our books over the next 3 4 years come down to a stage of close to 100% that is the journey that we have embarked on okay so also your international business has been on a growth path uh, could you tell us how much of the total um, portion of the revenue contribution now comes from international versus domestic and where do you see things going forward from here? So international currently is at 31% and 69% comes from domestic. Uh, that is the situation uh, uh, for the financial year 24. But mm -hmm. if you look at 25, I expect that to change because we have written a substantial growth, uh, uh, we have done a substantial growth in the domestic business. Mm -hmm. So I think going forward, uh, our domestic uh, book will, in terms of percentages, will be higher compared to uh, international. Uh, book. Uh, we also need to get our credit rating in order to at least a A minus level before we start uh, focusing on the international business, uh, because then we get access to really good quality international business. So that, that is something we are doing. We'll be meeting with the uh, rating agencies in the month of July, and hopefully we'll be able to get our rating back on track. And then we'll start growing our international. Got that, sir. Sir, could you also help us understand a little bit on the premium growth, both internationally and domestically, and what's the outlook? So, uh, domestically, we'll be growing the book, uh, and internationally, it will be flat for this year. Overall, the growth will be about 15-16 percent to the entire book. Mm. Okay, and how long before we see that uptick coming in on the international front, since FI25 will be flat? Hopefully uh, next year, like I said, we are already in touch with the uh, rating agencies and once the rating comes up, then we'll be able to really go full hog into the international market. The markets are looking good today, a lot of good uh, opportunities there. So, and you know, from a, uh, uh, from a solvency perspective, we are very good. We are currently, our solvency is at 3.25. So that enables us to look at opportunities and, uh, you know, write good quality business. 
Got that. Uh, sir, lastly, you did talk about your combined ratio. What is it at currently and where do you foresee it going to? So, 111.8 at the current uh, level. Maybe in the next couple of years, it will go closer to 105, 106. That is the range we are looking at. And uh, when, when does it go to the peak, back to the peak levels? Mm, sorry? When does it go back to the peak level, sir, that you had experienced a little while ago? No, so we are doing well now. We are okay. doing very well. We have done uh, 111 and uh, going forward, that will definitely come down. All right. Okay. Understood, sir. Understood. Yep. Thank you so much, sir, for uh, speaking to us on Business Today television and uh, sharing all these insights. I wish you all the very best for the upcoming quarters as well, so that we can have uh, more understanding of how the business is shaping up and what's the growth outlook. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. With that, viewers, we wrap up this uh, special edition uh, as far as GIC uh, reinsurance is concerned. Uh, the company has highlighted that clearly they are uh, looking for an improved rating coming in in the coming quarters. Once that happens, then they will be having a better outlook as far as the international business is concerned, even though FY26 could be flattish. But FY26 is when they could be looking at an improvement going forward from here. With that, we wrap up. But do stay on as Business Today Television will continue to get you more earnings and insights uh, from the world of uh, companies that are reporting their Q4 numbers.